Okay, everybody, I am so, so excited today because I am joined by Dina Shihavi, aka Melody from Archive 81, which is out now on Netflix. Everybody, there is spoilers in this interview for the show. So make sure you watch season one first and then come back to this. We're gonna be talking all about those things. Dina, how you doing today? I'm good. I'm so excited to talk to you. Yeah, I, I'm so thrilled to talk to you. It, it's so exciting. Um, I'm wondering too, with this role you're in, was there ever any hesitation for you taking on this part? Or did you know right away you wanted a role like this out of the gates? I knew I wanted it. I read the script and fell in love with the part and just like willed it into existence that I got it. Um, and then I got to set and I was like, holy shit, I'm in pain and in distress for <laughs> eight episodes. I was like, oh my God. And it took a lot out of me. Um, and and in that way, it was like a huge challenge, but such an incredible experience to go home every day after a whole day of just feeling like you're giving every part of you to something. And the script was so good. And the creatives, like all the directors were incredible. The actors are incredible. Our writers did such an amazing job to really like take you on this journey. And so it was an awesome experience. I loved it. Oh no, that's awesome. And it looks like you're having fun out there doing it, which is always awesome. And I'm wondering too, what went into the prep for this character of Melody, knowing this is based off of a podcast, did you go and listen to the podcast or did you keep that separate? I listened to the podcast once when I was auditioning. And then once we started shooting, I never went back to it, even though I loved it and I thought it was awesome. But the even, I really believe that the show honors the podcast and keeps like, its essence, um, but then it takes off and it's it's its own entire new thing and Melody's really different. And so I really tried to stay in the world that was created for the show. So I didn't go back to it once we started shooting. Oh, that, that makes sense. And yeah. I love how you, you made your own take on Melody and it was just exciting to see it unfold as the season went on. And what I love about Melody and you do so well is the acting with the handheld camera. So when you're doing that, is that challenging, especially the shots where you're filming yourself? Like, did you have to get the right angle? Was that something that, you know, was a different challenge for you as an actress? What's funny is that I remember in episode one, um, Becca Thomas, our director was like, do you know, you keep filming yourself, like giving yourself a double chin. She was like, make <laughs> like lift it up. I just like, didn't care. I was like, who gives a shit? Like, you know, um, but I, before I got to Pittsburgh, emailed um, emailed the team and I was like, I need to have a high eight camera for myself so I can practice. And the minute I got there, they gave me my own one and I just at home filmed myself as the character. I would just, I always journal as a character. It's sort of how I get into the headspace. And so I just did these video journals as Melody. Um, and I never gave this camera back. I still have it because I was like, it'd be too <laughs> embarrassing to like give it back to them and have them like watch all this stuff I did. Um, and I walked around Pittsburgh and like filmed some things and filmed myself. And so I tried to get as comfortable with it as possible so that when I showed up on set, I'd spent some time with it already. And then it didn't feel like an actor holding a camera and it felt natural. Yeah, and, and it totally came off natural. And it's funny just talking to you right now because I feel like you're going to start interviewing me because I always imagine Melody interviewing the people at the Vista with the it. camera. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's interesting. What, what, what stood out to me about Melody and your portrayal of her was how likable she is. I mean, like when I look at all the protagonists and shows I've watched recently, she's so damn likable. Now, for you, though, did you find any bad or like maybe some gray in Melody in the character? Yeah, I mean, I think being likable is tricky. Um, I think being a people pleaser, ultimately, and just someone that cares about people as much as Melody does, is her downfall, essentially. Mm. Like, she can't help herself but go back and save Jess. She, she can't help but care about people so deeply that, you know, I think Annabelle says, like, you have to stop helping people so much it's um it's annoying and I think that's a little bit of foreshadowing for Mel Melody because you get to the point where you're like oh wow she really can't 
stop herself. And because she can't stop herself, she ends up actually hurting herself. Mm. And I think that that's a bit of a gray. I think being too likable, being too pleasing to people can sometimes hurt you. I've experienced that. I've had to learn the hard way. Like, oh, I, I can't just be nice to everyone. I can't just, I mean, I, can't, I am naturally nice to everyone, but you have to be discerning. And I don't think Melody is very discerning. Um, yeah. And I think maybe she becomes more discerning as the show goes on and distrustful of people, but she's, she is someone that will trust everyone until proven otherwise. So running off of that, you know, that's so interesting you're saying that. Would Dina do anything differently than Melody? Is there like one thing that stands out to you? Like, okay, I would definitely not do that in that situation. <laughs> oh my God. There's so many similarities between me and her that actually doing it, I was like, yeah, I feel like I'd take all these same steps. Um, even to the point of her keeping the fact that she's looking for her mother a secret, that she's not, mm. didn't tell her therapist, didn't tell her best friend. Um, Cause she doesn't want to disappoint people. She doesn't want to upset anyone. She but would I do anything different? Maybe I would, once I saw Samuel down in that ritual, yeah. I would cut him out completely. I wouldn't give him any <laughs> sort of like, maybe he's okay because he helped Jess and maybe there's a, she, I'm like, girl, don't trust this guy. That would be, I would be very immediately distrustful of him after I saw him, you know, down in the, the room with all those people doing the ritual for okay so you bring up to the rituals yeah people wondering watching that is that ever spooky on set when you film scenes like that is there ever something in the air that's a little like i know this is fake but you know do you feel that ever yeah i was creeped out and i started getting <laughs> such weird scary dreams um of like demons and like turning into a demon and oh, mold. God. It was just, it creeps up on you. It, especially because if you remember in that scene, I'm alone kind of behind a wall in the dark, hearing mm. all this weird breathing and singing and it creeped me out. I got genuinely scared. I don't like being in the dark. I don't like, <laughs> I guess spooked really quickly. So yes, it is really scary genuinely when you're shooting. Oh, so that, that's good. Cause then it also helps with your character. I guess it's easy to get to that place. Yeah, you don't right? really have you, to act. You just, yeah, allow it. <laughs> you're just freaked out. Yeah. Um, it's interesting too, speaking of scary scenes, I think maybe my favorite scene in the whole series is the dinner seance scene. Um, oh, that's my favorite scene too, yeah. Was that crazy filming in general for you? Cause like that would be something, I think even the performances around you and your performance, are you like scared of where you guys are kind of going in that? Like, is it surreal? Oh yeah, I remember prepping, knowing that we had to shoot that scene that day and thinking, whoa, this is gonna be hard to shoot. Um, and Saul, the actress who plays Beatrice was mm. so, incredible it gives me chills she never marked it she did it full out to that level every single time and it was horrifying to watch because they really did the effects on the day mm -hmm. um like there was blood and everything and it felt really real and it all of us had really guttural reactions to it um Oh yeah, that that whole shooting that whole thing was incredible. And Saul, the actress, is brilliant, and she just gave her all, like take after take after take after take. I don't know how she did it. It was really impressive. No, it's one she of was the most great. Memorable moments from the show, actually, shooting that scene. One hundred percent, and and not just her performance, but your performance, and everyone just like being on the same page to pull that off. Like you said, it's so challenging, especially dinner scenes and adding that. So props to you guys, amazing. Oh, thank um, you. You also do something I think it's very underappreciated is amazing screaming. And I feel like, especially what really stood out to me is when the guy fell off the building near you and you scream, because the scream is what scared me, not the guy falling off the building. I was terrified. It made me feel terror, which is awesome. Oh, so, good. Oh, good. That um, makes me no, That's is there a any scream? Compliment. I'm gonna take that and keep it. Thank you. Oh no, you deserve it. And but is there is there any scream queens you were inspired by before this or just in your life in general? Oh wow, Scream Queens, that's a great question. I wish I had an immediate answer to it, but I 
I don't have someone in particular to think of, but I just love the idea that Scream Queens is a thing. I've always yeah. found that fascinating. Yeah. No, but you it. tap into that really well because there's some that can't pull that off as much and it's so important. And I think I hope you're great that means it. I'm a Scream Queen. That would be great. I, 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 hell yeah, I'm putting you in there. If you want okay. to be in there, <laughs> That'd be awesome. it's official. Uh, breaking news. <laughs> but um, <laughs> now speaking with Dan, the character of Dan, you and Mama do have such great chemistry together. Um, but there is going to be this debate people are already having where, you know, how much love is there maybe between Melody and Dan? And I'm talking about love, love. So do you see yeah. any love, love between Melody and Dan? Or is it maybe kind of more of a friendly? Well, that's can... what I love about what they did is that it's ambiguous, right? It's not the driving force is not this romance between them, but actually something deeper. Um I had someone once say to me, an acting teacher, this guy, Benjamin Mathis, who's incredible out in LA, that human beings connect to each other through their pain. Mm. And when you're connected, he was, it was talking about with acting, if you're trying to connect like me, Dina, to Melody, it's like, where do we share pain, right? Like, where do we share loss? Where are, where are insecurities the same? Like reveal your insecurity to someone and that's how you can connect. And I think with Dan and Melody, I thought about that throughout the show because they've both lost their families. They, they're both orphans essentially. Mm. Um, you know, Melody has her, um, you know, adopted mother Lila who just recently died, but they're searching for meaning. They're searching for identity. And so that to me is their primary connection is that they share this like sense of loss and sense of longing. Um, and whether that turns romantic or whether that turns platonic doesn't matter because mm. that is that is so that has so much depth and it's so true. And I find that so moving. And as the arc with a man and a woman, for that to be the arc of the show, that it's this depth of connection that isn't about expectation or outcome, but actually about true human, um, you know, tr true human heart, body, soul, likeness. That is beautiful to me. And th that's a beautiful answer. Like, see, that's why I ask those questions because there's no one who could give it better than you. So really, really good stuff. And that will kind of help the debate, I think on Reddit and stuff about okay. that. On Reddit, um, I, I want there to be a debate on Reddit, I hope. Oh, that. there will be, there will be for <laughs> sure. But that, that will stir it up, which is good. Now, um, you had mentioned that, you know, Melody is one of her driving forces is finding her mother this season. And yeah. it's amazing by the end of the season, she finds her mother. So yeah. can you maybe predict maybe for season two, like how Melody might process this? Oh, yeah. I mean, she was abandoned by her. I think she must want some answers, you know? Um, but I also think this really shocking thing has happened where she's suddenly been catapulted 25 years into the future. <laughs> um, and so I just think that it's such a great place to start season two because they now have to keep Kalego in the other world. Will they do it? They'll have to do it together. They have to find Dan. There are all these different things that they have to do. And there's hurt. There's, you know, a feeling of abandonment. There's a feeling of betrayal, but there's also a desperate need to have a mother, to have a connection with her, that it's, there's so much there to, I think, get really juicy and into. Um, so I'm really excited um, and I hope we get to do it because to have a mother daughter duo like emotionally, but also just as um, like a badass team trying to figure all this out would be really incredible. Yeah, I hope you guys get to do it too. I'm sure you will. Uh, everybody's so excited here, even especially watching this interview, seeing your great performance. They're probably so just happy to see this amazing actress. You're breaking out, which is awesome. Thank uh, you. Dina, thank you so much for joining me today. And everybody, please make sure to rewatch Archive 81 on Netflix. Tell your friends about it. Let's get this show going. It's so good. Uh, Dina, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope to talk to you in the future. Steve, it was a pleasure. Thank you so much.